life as we know shows an incredibly high level of complexity and sophistication. However, organic macromolecules such as RNA or DNA are composed of simpler molecules, which we call the first building blocks of life. But which are these molecules? How did they form? And where? Could they have been formed outside Earth and then come inside asteroids? I am Marina Fernandez and my research focuses on physics of complex systems. For this work, I collaborated with Jacobo Aguirre and Izaskun Jiménez Serra, and we belong to this nice place, the Astrobiology Center CESIC INTA in Madrid. This video is part of Space Factor Contest, organized by the European Astrobiology Network Association. So today, we are presenting you the interstellar phosphorus chemistry as a complex system. We refer to the prebiotic chemistry that occurs within the edges of molecular clouds, which are enormous accumulations of gas and dust found in galaxies. In addition, we will focus only on phosphorus bearing molecules. So far, only a few of them have been observed outside Earth, with the use of radio telescopes. But why only phosphorus? Well, Phosphorus is the center of phosphates, which are key for life as they are present in the cell membrane as phospholipids, in the nucleotides of RNA and DNA, and in ATP, the energy transportation molecule. So, we aim to understand if the building blocks of life could have been formed in molecular clouds, starting from the formation of the simplest phosphorus bearing molecules, which could have ended up in the early Earth. Understanding this, we are closer to know more about the origin and evolution of life, key question in astrobiology. We must mention that in molecular clouds, the physical conditions are quite special. Chemistry occurs at very low temperatures and high vacuum, and consequently chemical reactions are two-body reactions. So, our starting point is an astrophysical database called UMIST, which contains more than 6,000 reactions of this kind. We extract the most important ones containing phosphorus and add one more reaction. Indeed, this reaction was first proposed by Tascun Jimenez Serra and, as we will see, plays a key role in our research. In addition, UMIS database provides the rate coefficient values of each reaction, which determine the velocity of the reaction and will be represented with letter K. Unfortunately, most of them have great uncertainties because they are difficult to measure experimentally. Now, here is where we develop our novel method. We take our set of reactions and apply networks theory to it. It is easy to understand how. For example, for this reaction, nodes are the chemical species. Then, we draw a directed link from each reactant to each product. Also, we draw an undirected link between the two reactants to represent that both are needed for the reaction to occur. If we repeat the same for all the reactions, we get the phosphorus chemistry network in the interstellar medium. But you might be wondering, okay, but what are we going to do with it? To answer this question, let's focus on these two molecules, PO and PM. PO is a very important molecule for our purpose, because its bond is also present in the phosphates and it's considered a prebiotic molecule. However, its abundance and the abundance of PN represent a paradox because computational modeling often shows that PN is more abundant than PO, while observations say the opposite. To compare the abundances of both molecules, researchers refer to their ratio, that is, the abundance of PO divided by the abundance of PN. In order to shed light on this paradox, we need to gather observations, computational modeling, and our secret ingredient, theoretical analysis. We want to obtain explicit equations of the abundances of PO and PN in terms of the read coefficients. However, the resulting differential equation system is huge, with too many variables. So, how can we simplify the problem? Well, here is where the phosphorus chemistry network can help. If we observe it carefully, these white nodes do not have arrows emerging from them. This means that the abundances of these molecules do not affect the abundances of the other molecules, so we can just get rid of them. Next, let's observe the blue ones. It turns out that these molecules are much more abundant than the others which they interact with, so we assume that they are constant. It's like adding a glass of water to the ocean. 
So, if they are constant and we know their initial abundances, they are already solved. What is left is much easier, isn't it? Well, let's do some math. If we give a number to each molecule, pH 3 is 1, pH 2 is 2, and so on, it turns out that the abundance of the molecule I over time is given by this expression, where C and R are constants. We obtain the explicit equations for the abundances of these seven chemical species, including PO and PN. We have tested our equations for two regions within molecular clouds, dark cloud cores at very low temperatures close to 10 Kelvin and hot cores at higher temperatures. So finally, this is the POPN ratio evolution over time in both environments. In the x-axis, we plot the time. Along the y-axis, we see the fraction between PO and PN. On the one hand, we are representing the results coming from numerical methods, and on the other hand, we plot the resulting curve using our explicit equations. Despite the approximations applied, they match almost perfectly. What we find in these figures is that our model always shows a ratio of PO-PN larger than 1, so PO is always more abundant than PN in molecular clouds. Moreover, our equations can be used to analyze how the value of PO-PN ratio changes when we change the rate coefficients within the range of uncertainty. What we find is that most of the rate coefficients do not really affect the PO-PN ratio. However, the change in the rate coefficients of these three reactions has a big impact on the PO-PN ratio. This means that, if we knew with more precision the rate coefficients of these three reactions, we would reduce the uncertainties of the abundances of PO and PN, and astrochemical models would show better results. I know it's been a lot of information, but there is only a few things I want you to grasp from this talk. First, our model is useful for understanding the origin of prebiotic molecule PO under different astrophysical environments. In addition, our work helps to know which reactions are most worth studying experimentally. It would improve the current astrochemical models. And our model uses physics of complex systems, which is particularly interesting because complex systems often present emergent phenomena, as is life. In order to shed light about the origin and evolution of life, we want to extrapolate our model to more complex molecules. However, we definitely need to work with other scientific fields in such a multidisciplinary topic. Big questions always need collaboration, and we are making huge progress, but there is still a lot to explore.